What is going on guys? Uh, I had to fix this squeaky door there. It was bothering me. All right, so what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel, previews and vlogs. I'm glad you guys could be here to watch another one of my videos. Now, I hope everybody's doing well with this quarantine. That you guys are staying healthy, you know, your family and everything. Again, I keep talking about it and it's a big deal that we're having, of course. Uh, currently, I'm not working, but I'm doing okay. So, uh, on today's video, before I you know, keep going rambling on about different stuff, today's video is going to be something a little bit different. I'm not going to be doing anything with the cars, or in a way, it is. it does pertain to cars, or, you know, um, basically working with cars in a way. So, it's going to be actually showing you a product I picked up about a month ago, or about, actually a little bit longer, about a month and a half ago, and I've been messing around with it, seeing how it works, I can show you guys a better review on it, and actually how it actually works and what it actually does com compared to other products out there. Now, I can't compare to every single one of these uh, products out there, but it is an OBD2 scanner that I had purchased. I had another one that I used to use before. It was from PLX, it was the Kiwi. Now, I had the first version that was a wired version, pretty much. You hooked it up, just like a scanner, like just any of you, OBD2 has its plug-in for the OBD2, OBD2 port, and it had like a little small box that through its own Wi-Fi system, it hooked up to your phone. Uh, you had to download an app, of course. And I went and picked up the same thing, but the upgraded version. All right, so this is the PLX Kiwi. This is the fourth version of it. They do have, you know, three other versions previous to this. The first one that I had, again, with the cord on. This one is supposed to be Bluetooth only. Uh, the problem with this is it doesn't always work. Now, this actual scanner, has a lot of good features if it worked. It has two different apps, let me show you guys here. It's got its own app, you know, to, through PLX, and it's got, you could use dash commands, which is another app. But the problem here is, it never connects to it. This is what we get when we're trying to connect. We always get an error message. And even though I have, the, it, it is reading it on the Bluetooth, it still gives you an error message. So. This one here, I think it's worked maybe, maybe about a handful of times. Now the first one with the actual wire and everything, or the cord or whatever you want to call it, or the has worked every single time. This one barely wants to hook up. So in my opinion, it doesn't work as it should. It did cost me $89 for this little thing, for it not to work the way it should. Now, I never contacted Kiwi, I just never bothered the time. Sometimes those companies don't really help out much or anything like that. Never really did anything with them. So, but what I did do is I picked up this one. It's called the Blue Driver Scan Tool. I've seen it advertised before, I've seen it on videos and stuff like that, and I wanted to check it out for myself. And then I'm showing you guys, you know, basically, what it does and right here this one right here now I've already opened the box so there's not gonna be an unboxing on this thing but it does hook up to the iPhone the iPad and the iPod and of course your Android it's compatible with anything from 1996 and newer North American cars Europe of course 2001 and newer uh, and 2004 and newer for diesel cars and you know vehicles sold in Australia New Zealand 2006 and newer and vehicles sold in other countries you have to call it in for it has a one-year limited warranty and of course there is, they give you a phone number for support or an even email for them. So I mean, this is the actual little tool right here. Again, I've been using this for about a month and a half or so already. Product was about a hundred bucks. So I think it's $10 more than the Kiwi, but it works a lot better. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what it, could, what it does. So real quick, let's go to the car. I'm gonna do it on the Trailblazer because the Trailblazer has an airbag light on and I have an issue with the thermostat. I already actually scanned it a few times and it keeps popping up the codes. Just to show you guys the code and what else this little thing does. Now, a lot of these OBD2 scanners will only check engine codes. Unless you go into, you know, two, three hundred dollar scanners, scan tools or anything like that, that'll check a lot more. I was a more professional ones. But if you guys are just looking just something to check codes and see what's going on, this checks a lot of different codes. So. Like every other OBD2 scanner, you go underneath the car. On the Trailblazer, it's right, of course, here. And then we're gonna just hook it in there. And you get the blue light going. So that means it's active. Now, we gotta download the app, of course. All right, so once it's hooked up, I 
actually set this right in here into this pro clip mount just to get for the purpose of this video so I can show you guys what's going on here. So once you get it hooked up, you're gonna go into, of course, the Google Play Store or in my case, the App Store. We're gonna type in, of course, Blue Driver, just like it says up there. OB2 scan tool, and this is the one you wanna get. All right, so in my case, I already have it on my phone, so we're gonna go ahead and open it. Now, my car is currently running, so I have the engine running right now. Now, with this scan tool, you can't have the car running. You don't have to have it on just the on position. You can actually have the whole car running. So, here is your menu. You pretty much have read codes, clear codes, save reports, freeze frame, smog check, mode six, check engine status or mill status, vehicle info and service info. Also, we have a live data monitor, and of course, here's your scan tool. And then, if you type on that little, the little three dots there, that's pretty much like your option or more of a menu. You know, update the sensor settings, contact info, user manual. You actually have a user manual in here. It's like a video on there. Uh, order another sensor if you want, uh, and rate and review the sensor, of course. So let's go back up to the main menu here. If you want, to, of course, to read codes, we're gonna go ahead and click on read codes gonna ask you to read all these codes right here of course you could check the check engine light codes only you could actually look at just the common dash codes or all system codes so we're gonna click on all system codes now I did clear most of the codes on my car but we'll click that anyways now this takes about a good I said about two minutes it actually read every single module in the code so get about two minutes and then it'll scan of course it's nine percent scanning right there it tells you the percentage but again it takes about two minutes to read every single code all right, so once it's done reading all the codes, just like you see here, it tells you all there were three codes found according to this thing. Now it asks you to put the correct, the current mileage on the car. So I'm gonna say 160, what was that at? 162, 800 I think was, oh, that's a lot more. All right, I don't know what exact miles I was at, but I'm just putting that in for now. And of course, then it has all your codes right there. Um, click on that before I want to so no check engine light codes. so these will be your codes right here you got a check engine light confirm trouble codes none no trouble codes pending it's giving me an airbag code again because I do have a airbag light on airbag system of course service airbag system clear that but the light stays on of course and then it's got a current status it's basically a u1000 code like I couldn't communicate with something the only thing I keep getting every time I run this it says clear digital radio receiver codes I have an aftermarket radio I'm thinking that GM has something in there that actually reads if the radio is actually in there or not if there's an issue with the radio same thing because it is hooked up through OnStar with like the phone or like the teleservice so I've also had uh, some kind of phone code or something like that I, I remember seeing it actually if you go in here and you see the reports right in there, click on that save reports and you're actually able to tell what reports on it. So let's just check 418, which is probably a few days ago. Here you go. So the last one was right, multiple body modules and there was a code in here, something about a digital receiver. There's the same digital receiver code, cellular phone code, that one right there. So that's basically for the OnStar. And that's because I have this aftermarket radio on there more than likely because I don't have any check engine lights or any issues with the rest of the car other than the airbag code. Anyways, back to this. So, once you read the codes, you can't clear them if you want. I've already have cleared all my codes before so I'm not gonna go ahead and clear them. Again, I got no check engine light codes anyways and I cannot clear their airbag code until I get that sensor replaced underneath my seat. So, you could read the codes and clear the codes from this. You saw the save report, so every time you run a scan check, it saves the report of what that came up to. With your freeze frames in here, this is actually pretty cool. It As you drive the car, all these will start to pop up. Engine cooling temperature, uh, calculate engine values. You get a lot of different data and stuff that'll pop up in here that you would normally use to diagnose a car properly if you are a mechanic. I mean, and, and again, this is, could be used as, you know, if you're helping a buddy out, if you're doing some side work, this, system could actually help that out next thing we do is smog check now the smog check this is for emissions this will tell you if your car is ready for emissions so just right in here I got the 
little quotation mark with the yellow emblem on there said it's not ready the reason it's not ready is because i did clear the codes recently i just basically reset the whole system but it does give you green check marks when everything is ready na means that's not available catalyst not ready of course you got to do some run, uh, drive times and stuff like that ac refrigerant is not available won't read that and again oxygen oxygen sensors are not ready either because i just recently cleared the code so i think i have to drive about 100 miles or so before these things to come up but again if this is a basically if you're going to get this car checked for emissions this is something good to have you can actually check your car and see if it's good to go if you have any greens on here all greens means good green check mark means good as well if it's like red or yellow like this like i couldn't take this for emissions because it would fail because there's systems that are not ready with the catalyst the avap system and the oxygen sensors but everything was in the green i would get a green check mark if it was in the red then you more likely probably have a check engine light or something on but that's for getting emissions checked out now let's get out of here mode six this I, again i'm not sure exactly what these modes do it gives you a max a value a minimum value of specific items oxygen sensor i guess this is basically gives you the minimum value the max value could be is 5.19 and i guess it gives you status complete it's not ready um that is complete and passes so basically it does like system checks i believe of every sensor on here that that sensor let's see what this other one is here another oxygen sensor what's this one here with the yellow test is not complete for bank one oxygen sensor so basically you could literally go into this with this scanner and check a lot of different things and of course you get formatted and raw data on here as well now as we go down here we got check engine light status if you click on this it tells you the runtime of the vehicle, which right now has been running for seven minutes and 55, 56, 57 seconds, whatever. Uh, and it basically tells you your check engine light is off. So it tells you that the check engine light is off. That's basically a status of your check engine light. Vehicle info. Now this is pretty cool right here. You could check if this car has potential recalls. You click on here. If there's any data, now this is basically data that the manufacturers of the sensor have for your vehicle. If there's any data, it'll show up in here. Also, service bulletins. These are repair procedures on bulletins of specific things. For the airbag, since I have the airbag light on, it says airbag occupant sensor classification system OCS. There is a bulletin for that. To click on it, it gives you more information on the actual bulletin. We're not gonna get into that right now. That's something I'm gonna have to look into later. Also, it gives you vehicle specs. So it tells you to, to always trailblazer. So this is basically, it reads your VIN number automatically. OH Chevy Trailblazer, SS, LT, it gives you the different trim levels, four door. It goes into, of course, gasoline, horsepower, all wheel drive. It gives you a lot of different specs, brake system, hydraulic. It tells you a lot of different things of your uh, for your own car. Next system, of course, this is going to be the service. Now in here, of course, this tells you how to reset the oil or how to reset the TPMS sensors and things like that. So this is if to reset the oil sensors, it's not that hard. It's actually done in the menu of the display right in here. Pretty much going through this whole system here, you get you can reset the the sensors. To reset the, of course, the tire pressure sensor, it does give you step by step instructions. And there goes my GoPro. All right, real quick. One thing I do want to show you guys, I'm going to go back into the save reports. So let's go in here and click on this. Now I had a coolant temp sensor before code, no check engine light, just the code had popped on. And that's because my coolant gauge actually stopped working. It was, it wouldn't check anything. It wasn't actually giving me any readings and it happened when it was really cold. Now that it's been working fine ever since I haven't had any issues. Now. It gave me that code because I'm thinking the thermostat is probably getting stuck. Now, if you click on a code, it takes you right into here and tell, it tells you the frequency of how common it is with these trailblazers. And it's actually pretty common. You know, it says very rare or common. This code, the P0128 code is common. This is one good thing I like about this thing. It tells you that it tells you top reported fixes rep is replacing the engine coolant thermostat. And then if you go in here, click on that Amazon it takes you right to Amazon the car is right there and you can scroll down and there is the thermostat if you wanted to buy it now that's one pretty cool thing it takes you if it has links it'll take you straight to the links uh, and of course it tells you also frequently reported fixes replace coolant temp sensor now 
that's something that's pretty cool about this system that it tells you the exact things you could try and fixing how common the codes are and what the repairs are and if you want to buy the part you can go right into Amazon if there's other parts in there like you know other manufacturers or other vendors I should say that sell it then it'll be in there as well so that's a quick look at this system here this basically oh one more thing and this is basically the live data monitoring by the way now this gives you I have it set for giving me the the throttle position where it's at air mass airflow rate coolant sensor tells me where the coolant level is right now is actually the temperature I said it's at 176 degrees Fahrenheit so it is reading fuel system timing advance for cylinder one it gives me the where it's at and where it should be between six and ten and a half degrees which I'm right in the middle of that so I mean there's nothing really going on with my car itself but this is I mean this whole blue driver OBD2 scanner is one amazing little thing for a hundred dollars you can pick this thing up on Amazon like I said earlier and it does the thing of you know other OBD2 scanners Hey guys well that's the end of the video just wanted to show everybody exactly about this little scan tool how I mean how amazing it is like I said I've had I've used other scan tools before and I've had my issues especially with the one from PLX I thought I thought that was gonna be something like the first one was but better and it was not um, I hope they fix that or there's some update for that one at some point because I do like their you know quarter mile and 0 to 60 little track time they show on there but if you guys are looking for a decent scan tool then don't want to you know pay $300 for one that you got to carry around everywhere again I keep this hooked up to the car my phone's on me constantly so if something a check engine light comes on open up the app turn the car on scan the car that's how easy it is going I'm gonna you know if I'm gonna I got emissions coming up on the car or something again check the uh, the systems and make sure everything's ready make sure everything's passing take it for emissions and sure enough it'll probably pass but that's the end of the video again. This link in the description below if you guys want to get this little scan tool. Again, it's the Blue Driver scan tool and it's $99, I believe, of course, plus tax. So again, the description and the link below. I'll see you guys in the next video. It'll be when I pick up the Cadillac, which is already done, by the way. The ceramic coating has been done on the car. I just got to go pick it up. It's been crappy and I don't want to drive it in the rain, even though it is ceramic coating. I know it's, it's just, just the way I am. Once it's uh, next week, I'm going to go get the car, which should be after this video comes out. And then it's going in for service to Cadillac for the rear differential recall. And then after that, I'm going to put the wheels on and do some other stuff to it, which I'll be filming as well. But again, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope it informs you. And I hope, you know, if you guys, it helps you out picking out if you are looking for a, some kind of scanner. So I'll see you guys next time. Take care and stay safe out there. Peace.